Good morning. We'll be starting in about three minutes. Ellison some ministries. Today is lunch day. <laughs> I do not own the rights to this music. This is Mary Mary walking. Because we walking today. <laughs> While we waiting to get started, make sure you have your Bibles ready. Go get your Bible, get you something to drink. Morning, Minister Nikia. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Marva. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing well. Right, hey, walking this morning. That's right. <laughs> walking this morning. Ooh. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And a shout out to all of you, my sisters, that are walking today. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Ministry launch party. All right. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, oh, I give God glory this morning. I really do. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank you for joining Ellis and Ministries this morning. Or you can say E-Ministries. Um, if you can't say Ellison, but it's easy. It's my name backwards, Ellison Ministries. My name is Minister Michelle Collins, and I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this wonderful early Sunday morning, yeah, the early bird, that's me. <laughs> I always will be early, because I am an early, I go to bed early. <laughs> But I give honor to God this on this day, on my ministry launch day. I am like, yay. I mean, super excited, y'all. Uh, this was truly a push, but I thank God for entrusting me to represent him in the kingdom. Um, I would like to give thanks to my leader, um, Apostle Dr. Delisa Rogers Butler of the Love Church Charlotte to whom this ministry is submitted under. Um, so I'm not out here just winging it. Um, she has definitely been a thrust in my back <laughs> uh, to push me out here. And, but I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful to God that I have a leader such as her, a leader um, who's after God's heart, a leader who loves God's people, who will train his people up and push them out and to, for them to walk and what God has created him to do. So I'm thankful for a, a leader, a spiritual mother, everything all in one. Very thankful and blessed um, that God saw fit to place me with her. And so um, just a little about the ministry, not even a little, but um, the mission of 
of Ellison Ministry is to teach the Word of God. I do have a testimony that I will be sharing soon, not today, but I was walking in the valley of the shadow of death and one of the things when I came to, I asked God, I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? That was the first thing on my heart. God, what do you want me to do? And then repenting for not doing what he had already told me to do. And so... The question was, God, what's next? And so, this is the next. Ellison Ministries. This is what's right now. <laughs> this is the what's next. And so, um, but my mission is to teach the Word of God. As you see on my, um, my logo, you see the sword and the shield. It's the word and the, the, the sword and the shield work hand in hand. Word and faith. And so... Like I said, I want to bring the word, teach the word. You're going to hear me reading the word a lot. Because um, I don't take for granted that everybody can read. So I will vocally read the word. You will hear that a lot. We'll be going through a lot of scriptures. Because my goal is to equip you with the word. So that you can fight. And so that you can grow. And so we're going to go ahead and open up service. And get started. I want to open up. With Psalms one eight, with Psalms eighteen, one through two, and Psalms one hundred. If you have your Bibles, you can go there with me, or you can just listen to me. <laughs> Cause I did say I read the word, didn't? I? <laughs> oh, we get honored to God. Psalms eighteen. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength, because God, you are my strength. And without you, I cannot do this. You are my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. And God, I thank you for delivering me out of the hands of the enemy. I thank you for preserving my life. You are my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Lord, I do thank you. As we come into this place, Lord, we will make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Go ahead, just where you at, just make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give him a joyful noise. Yes, the Lord loves to hear that. He inhabits our praises. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I'm going to say it again. We, he has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Bless his name, y'all. Right where you are, bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. His truth endure to all generations. That is the word. His truth. And God, we thank you for your truth. We thank you, God, that you created us in your image. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture and not that of men. And I am thankful and I'm glad and I'm happy about that. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for you are my shepherd and I shall not want. God, all glory and honor belongs to you, Father. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And as we go ahead, we're going to get started in the Word. And we're going to um, just... Whew. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, He is so good. And you are so precious to Him. And Father, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Y'all just to stay right there. Father, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy and honorable, Father. There is truly none like you. The God who created heaven and earth. Only you, God. There is none other above you. There is none other more majestic than you. There is none other that can love like you. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We humble ourselves before you, God, on this day. 
We humble ourselves before you because without you we are nothing. Thank you for the breath of life that we have this morning, God. We can't even breathe without you, Lord. We have no movement without you, Lord. Without you, Lord, we are the walking dead. And I thank you, Lord, for giving us life. For giving life to these mortal bodies, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy, God. And there is none like you. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for protecting us from dangerous, unseen things that we don't even know about. But you have protected us. And some of us, you have preserved our life even when danger hit us. When we could have been dead, Lord, you resuscitated us. You gave us life. You gave us another chance. And for that, God, I say thank you. Forgive us when we haven't thanked you. Forgive us when we haven't acknowledged you, God. But on today, we thank you. And we acknowledge you, Lord, for who you are. You are a life preserver. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, as we open up, Lord, in this word, Father. Lord, I pray that your will is to I humbly submit myself to the will of your Holy Spirit to be used by you. How you see fit, how you choose on this day to speak to your people, God. To your sheep, Lord. The ones that you created. For you know where we are today and what we need today and what we need to hear today to get us through. And so, Father, I thank you. And I thank you for the word that's coming forth this morning. And again, your will be done, not my will. I am your vessel, Lord, created for you, God. Created for your will. Created to be used here in the earth. And Lord, I thank you and I give you all honor, glory, and praise, God. Hallelujah. And I thank you in Jesus' name. I pray. And we pray. Amen. Amen. Whew. God is so good, y'all. God is so good. Oh. God is so good. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. So. Right before we started, I told you to, while we were waiting, go ahead and get your Bibles, have your drink, your coffee, your water, and um, we're going to turn to the book of Ephesians. We're going to open up today with Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, and my topic today is the armor of God. I know this is a familiar scripture. But sometimes we have to go back to the basics. And that's what we're going to do today. Regardless of where, where you are, what your age is in Christ. we have to, Sometimes we get so old we forget the basics. And so today, um, like I said, our scripture is coming from Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. And I'm going to start reading now. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oh. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. My focus today is going to be on the word, which is our sword. And on the shield, which is our faith.
The book of Ephesians um, is authored by the Apostle Paul. And in this book, he in this chapter, in this um, even in the book of Ephesians, he's talking to the people at Ephesus. He is talking to the Christians, to the body of Christ. This word is for you and for me. And Paul is talking about the army. He's talking about spiritual warfare and recognizing who we are fighting against, who the enemy is. And there's different levels to our fights. There's different levels to our battles and our enemies that we fight. But the one thing that's going to remain constant is having our armor. Is having our shield, having the word, having the hymn of salvation, having our breastplate, and having our feet prepared. That's going to always remain the same. And one thing with the word of God, it is something we, we have to be ready. We have to be ready for battle at all times. Whether even if you 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 have to be ready, you, the word has to be ready. The word has to be in you, and that's why we study the God, study the word, study the word of God. And you should be able to speak the word at all times. But the only way to be able to speak that word and keep your sword sharp is by studying God's word. And as we're going through the scriptures, I'm going to tell you how to apply this. Maybe even, you know, we may even pray some scriptures. But one thing, I want you to get a visual of a soldier suited up in armor. You can even Google it if you need to, but I'm a visual person. And so, seeing this soldier, he has on his helmet, he has on his breastplate, he got on the proper shoes, he has his sword, and he has his shield. And the one thing that God, you know, illuminated for me, your sword and your shield, they are here. When you are prepared for battle and you're in your stance, you got your sword, you got your shield, whether you're left or right hand, it doesn't matter. But you're standing like this. You're prepared for battle. And that's the first thing that the enemy comes for. He comes for our faith. He comes for the word. Do you know the word? Because if you don't know the word, how can you have strong faith? Romans 10 and 17 says, So faith comes from hearing the good news. And people hear the good news when someone tells them about Christ. And so today, we're gonna, I'm going to be telling you about Christ. I'm going to be giving you some scriptures. And so I want to take you back. Let's start back in the beginning. When we, when we first heard the word being preached or taught or spoken. And when we heard that word, that word penetrated us. And when we heard it, we it was a it resulted in us giving our life to Christ. And if you haven't done so, I invite you to do so at any time during this broadcast. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, I invite you to do so at any time during this broadcast. The word starts working at that moment when you hear it, when you read it. It starts working because God already knows when that word is going to start working. He knows at that point in your life where this is her day. And the power of God starts moving within you. Because usually when we're at that point, we say, you know, I'm going to church because you're going through stuff. You should always want to go to church. You should always want to hear the word. Because again, God created us. We are his sheep. And the only way we're going to know what God wants from us is to be in the word. But the power of God starts working within us. Because we are open and we're available to receive it. And you have to choose to receive it. God is not going to force himself on you. And so, in the beginning and throughout our whole journey here, the word first deals with you. And when you realize, when you hear that truth, you realize, boy, I am a sinner. But it's by the grace of God that you're saved. You believe that Jesus died on the cross because that's you know it's part of the sinner's prayer is what we pray. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that I believe that he shed his blood for me, that he died and he was buried and he rose on the third day. And, and now we believe by faith, by faith, that we are saved. You heard the word, which is your sword, and you heard and you believe by faith, which is your shield. So even in the beginning. Your first two pieces of armor, your first two truths, you, and even before you even learn about Ephesians 6, you've already been equipped with your shield and your sword. Because once you get saved, you're happy, and can't nobody tell you no different. You are saved and you are happy to be saved, right? Can't nobody take that from you. 
And so, your first two pieces of armor, your shield and your sword. And again, when you think about that soldier in his stance and he's ready to battle, you got your seal and your shield and your sword. Your shield is here and your sword is here. Before any other area of your body is penetrated for your mind, your heart, your feet, you have to get through that word and you got to get through your shield. Like I said, that's the first two pieces of armor that you receive. Turn to me with um, to Hebrews 4 and 12. I want to explore this scripture. I'm going to be reading it from the King James and the Amplified. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In the Amplified Version, it says, For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit. The completeness of a person and of both joints and marrow the deepest part of our nature exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart so the sword is the word and the word is quick is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword so picture your two-edged a two-edged sword. It cuts on both ends. You have a blade on both sides and your handle's in the middle. It 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 cuts either way. <laughs> the word of God will cut you either way. However he comes, however, if he can it will cut you this way, it's gonna cut you this way. You're gonna get cut. And it says that it's full of power. Making it operative, energizing, and effective. So the word is going to work immediately. And that's what we said in the beginning. When we heard the word, it started doing a work right then. It was an immediate work. Immediate. Quick means to move fast or doing something in a short time. Powerful is to have a great deal of power, prestige, or influence. And this is what the word does. The word moves quick. It's, it's going to do what it came to do. That word is going to arrest you right where you are. It's going to touch you. It's going to touch your heart. And I say that power. There is nothing like the power of God. There is, is nothing like it. And the word influences you. Because that word is changing your mind right then. It's influencing what you may have thought or what you've been thinking. Whether you're young in Christ or older in Christ. This word is still working in us. Even to even me standing before you. I may be mentioning this word. But this word is still working in me. This word is still cutting me. It is still cutting areas in my life. And he, God is definitely not through with me. And because I'm here speaking before you doesn't mean I don't deal with things. Doesn't mean I don't have things going on. I don't need deliverance from things. But this word is coming for you right where you are today. It's coming for where you are today. It immediately starts working in our lives. And the more we read and study the word, the sharper our swords get. And the sturdier our faith gets. But the same word that we use against the enemy is the same word that cuts and kills us because we have to when we get saved we are born again Christians we are learning how to do things all over because we've learned as, as the world has taught us the world has taught us how to deal with things how to deal with our emotions but in the kingdom things are different we deal with our situations different we fight different but that word it comes for us the word kills us so that we can heal and that new creation that we are can come forth. Who God created us to be so that person can come forth and not the person that the world has, um, has nurtured. Because if you don't have parents that walk in the faith, the world nurtures you because your parents are thinking it's the world. 
but but those of you who are who are saved you want to make sure that your kids are raised according to the word of god sharpen their sharpen their sword early don't let your kids walk out here and they're not protected they don't understand protection i remember uh my son joseph was having bad dreams at one time i said listen when the enemy comes for you, or you see anything, you, you start saying the blood of Jesus. I taught my kids early. You better say the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I sure did. Because he, my son, my kids have seen a lot and experienced a lot. And I'm like, the first thing, you, you learn how to say the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, everything falls. <laughs> okay? You better learn how to use the name. The name of the Lord is powerful. Okay? And so, like I said, the world, the word starts dealing with us. It starts chipping away at us and our ways. And some and it hurts. It does hurt. And then word the word will change you because now you're a new creature in Christ. And we are born again, which I've already said. And now we have to learn again. We have to learn the ways of the kingdom. And I want to name a few things that the word will deal with and you know that the world that when we come in. And some of the things the Lord, the Lord starts dealing with how we think. He deals with our hearts. We deal, He deals with um, our um, interaction with people, our relationships, and so He starts. He deals with our hurts, our pains, the unforgiveness, feelings of being rejected, a love, whatever it is that has you bound. That word starts dealing with those areas. But you want to know how that shock your spirit because we have to acknowledge those. Because the enemy, he realizes, he realizes where we're weak as well. He know he's a very well of the things that we are dealing with. He knows the sins. He knows the hurts and pains. He knows where to keep people right there to help keep you in place. And he'll come at you and he'll make you feel defeated. But I'm here to tell you that you're not defeated. Okay? And so Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Let me help you sharpen your sword. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So when you're dealing, because a lot of times when we're dealing, when we're hurt, when we're dealing with pain, and sometimes that naturally and physically, that thing, it'll manifest. When you're dealing with stuff, you're dealing and you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to acknowledge it. And you're trying to hold on to your burdens and trying to figure out what you want and how you want to handle it. You don't have to handle it. The word says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And how do we give our burdens? We, first of all, you need to acknowledge that they exist. Because sometimes we're walking around like we're okay and you're not okay. And the enemy knows you're not okay. So now he has you stuck right here. But I'm here to tell you, acknowledge your hurt. Stop acting like you're okay and that nothing bothers you. Father, your word says, come to you. So here I am, Father. I'm coming to you. I'm giving you my burdens. I'm giving you my pain. I won't rest. I receive your rest. I receive your peace. Your word says your burdens are light. I'm going to give you my heavy stuff and I'm going to take the light stuff. And you give that thing to God. Because that stuff will kill you. And the enemy knows it. And a lot of times it's very subtle. Sometimes you don't even realize that because you have buried stuff and put it so far back. You don't even realize it. But the word tells us that he will give us rest to come unto him. You give that to him. And so when the enemy is trying to give that stuff back to you, remind you, like, mm -mm. you tell him, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have given this to the Lord. The Lord is fighting my battles. I will not be burdened down. Okay? Colossians 3 and 13 says, bearing with one another. Bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. And that's the focus I wanted. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Forgiveness is a hard thing. And we have to acknowledge when we have unforgiveness in our heart. Acknowledge it. You may not tell that person yet, but you need to acknowledge it before the Lord. I have unforgiveness in my heart towards so and so. Acknowledge that. Lay that at God's feet. Forgive as He has forgiven. 
you have to give forgiveness to get forgiveness. There's nothing too, it's nothing too hard to get, it's nothing too hard for God. God will forgive you. And all you have to do is ask. You have to acknowledge it. We have to, when we, when we give our lives to Christ, we commit, we, we confess our sins. I, I really, um, there was one time I saw this young lady, she was at the altar and she had just given her life to Christ. She was confessing her sins. She, when I say, I mean, she went in detail <laughs> and she confessed that thing. When you talk about somebody really like, Hey, I'm giving up. I'm trusting you. You have nothing to hide. And, and she was that she wanted forgiveness. But guess what? When we forgive and we give those things to God and God's forgiven us, guess what? Give that same gift to somebody, the gift of forgiveness. I know so-and-so hurt you, but you need to forgive them. It's for you mainly, more so for them, because forgiveness can get you trapped up in the box and you you just trying to figure out what's going on in your world. Let me tell you what's going on in your world. You got unforgiveness in your heart and you got to release that. Don't let the enemy trap you up there. Get ready to forgive people. And I know some things, I've been through some things that's taken me so much time. And I remember at one point I had to forgive a person in my life. And every day I was like, I forgive them. Because the enemy kept reminding me, this person did this. This person hurts you. No, Lord, I'm giving you my hurt. God, I need you to heal my heart. I need to be whole. But you have to know that by you know those things by reading your word. And this is what sharpening your sword is and building your faith. You believe in by faith you are forgiven. You believe in because you hear the word. And now you have and you have that faith, your shield is stronger and stronger. Okay? Because when the enemy comes at you, when I think about a battle, when the enemy comes for you, when he's swinging his sword, guess what? Your shield is here. And when he's trying to bring things back, you can be like, the Lord has forgiven me. That's your shield. You're blocking that. You're blocking that hit. When the enemy comes from your heart, he, you're blocking that hit. Because you've heard the word. You know the word. You're speaking the word. You, you're building your faith. Faith. Your faith and your um, and your shield go hand in hand. The sword and shield goes hand in hand. Knowing the word and living by faith. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. You are not unloved. You are not unlovable. Because God loves you. He gave his only begotten son for you so that you would live and not perish. You. For you, for me, for my sons, for your children, your grandchildren, for God so loved the world. There's no such thing as God doesn't love you. Because the enemy will tell you God doesn't love you. He actually tell you God doesn't love you because of all the bad things you've done. And for all the crazy stuff, it's like, no, there's no way. Sin is sin. God, and if you confess and you're honest, and that's the one thing, you got to be honest with yourself. Honest with where in the areas that you're lacking. Honest with your hard things. You have to be honest. Be honest with yourself and be honest with God, because God knows. He already knows, but He needs for you to acknowledge it so that He can do the good work in you. Psalms 86 and 5. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. Again, forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. I'm going to say that one again. For you, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving. Forgiving. We have a, we serve a forgiving God. Abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. That's what the word says. To all who call upon you. Have faith in knowing that when you call upon the Lord, he is going to respond. And again, like I said, the enemy will come at you. He'll make you believe you're not forgiven. He'll make you think that you've done too much, that, that God will not receive you. But yes, he will. Because that's what the word says. It's in the word. The word also says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In Psalms 139 and 14, God did not make a mistake when he created you. He knew the things that you were going to do. 
He's the he's the author. He's our author. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's our author. He knows what you're going to do. He has the book on you. He knows the things that you're going to go through. But you have to decide at which point in your life that you're going to be like, you know what, God, here I am. So get it in your in your spirit that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So when the enemy comes at your character and tell you that you weren't meant to be, yes, you were. God knew you were meant to be. He knew exactly who he's giving you to. Your sword and your shield. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 You can do all things. Because the enemy may come and tell you, no, you can't do that. You're not smart enough to run that business. You're not smart enough to go back to school. How are you going to do that? How are you going to, first of all, how you going to have time? Because you know this day and age, everybody's so busy doing stuff. But what are you busy doing? What are you busy doing? Are you busy being a busy body or are you busy in the kingdom? What, is, what are you busy with? But just know that when you set your mind to do something, you're thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God, Christ is your strength. He is your strength. And I pray that you get strength on today in whatever endeavors that you have that God has called you to do. Because if God has called you to do it, it can be done. Because the Bible says <laughs> that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens, which strengthens you. That's what the Bible says. Now you stand in faith on that. God has not given me the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear will have you feeling powerless. And you just have to, and that you have to take anything that you can't be loved, that you don't deserve to be loved, and that your mind ain't right, and that you, you, you're thinking crazy. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That's not God. And you have to tell the enemy he is a liar. You walk in power. You walk in love. And you have a sound mind. And that God has given you the power to God has given you the power to tread on the serpent's head, which is the enemy. You. So when the enemy comes at you and tell you you're not power, because a lot of things, because we don't even understand the power we have. But the Bible says, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I don't you I hear your sword sharpening up in the spirit. I hear it. I hear that shh, shh, like, come on, y'all, we're gonna get ready for battle. You got to stand in faith. I say, we got to get this word in us, okay? We got to get this word in us, okay? We got to grow. And you got to stay in this word. Because I'm telling you, y'all, those words going to keep you. You got to be able to spit this word out. And how do we do? We have to meditate on this word. We have to make time for it. And that comes when, you know, a lot of times we don't have time. You got time. Because a lot of times I play my, I let it record. I let it record when I'm going to bed, especially when I got a lot of stuff going on and I need my mind to be quiet. Put the word of God on. If the word won't suit, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. The word always brings me peace. The word will bring peace in your life. Okay? The word of God. Like you say, because that's where I'm like, we need to sharpen our sword. Sharpen it. Because if your sword is sharp, your faith is sharp. And when the enemy comes at you and with, with naysaying stuff and he's using people to come at you, you put that shield up. You block that. That's what you use that shield for. Your shield. I'm going to use my phone right. You block that thing. You block it because you know the word. You need to do a good the word the Bible says. That's one of the things that's been in my spirit. The Bible says, do you know what the Bible says? But like I said, one thing this means, we don't know what the Bible says because we're going to be teaching on the Word in Ellison Ministries, okay? Because I want your short, your swords to be sharp. And I and I had a situation where I was like, boy, I am thankful that I knew the Word, okay? Because the Holy Spirit would bring the Word back to your remembrance. You need to put put something in your repertoire that the Word that the Holy Spirit can bring back to your, mem your remembrance, okay? That's why we want to study, we want to meditate, keep the Word in your ear. Keep hearing it. Read it. I even read it out loud sometimes because sometimes I just need to hear the word. Sometimes you need to just hear your own voice reciting the word, okay? There was a time in my life where I used to be scared. I didn't want to hear my voice because I'm like, I sound different. I sound too country. But now I'm like, whew, bump that, okay? Don't let the enemy shut your mouth. 
Don't let the enemy shut your mouth. Okay? That's your power. So, in closing, the word gives you life. The word keeps your life. The shield and the sword protects you, which is your word and faith working hand in hand. You will live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is this, this same word will cut you because that word has to work on you so that you can be the person that God created you to be. So you can stand firm, okay? So this it will heal you, it's going to rebuild you. So God's word, so God's will can be done in you and through you. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. As you grow in the word, so does your faith. And as you as you grow in the word and you're growing your faith, you become unstoppable. You become unmovable. You start moving and shaking things. And last, you would know without a shadow of a doubt that all things work through Christ who strengthens you. Stay in your word and keep the faith. Do not lose your faith. And if you stay in your word, you won't lose your faith. You won't lose it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word today, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your sword and your shield, Lord. The first two weapons that you give us and that when we when we turn our life around and give our life to you. Because we believe the word that we heard and we believe by faith that we are saved. And Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for today for giving us scriptures to help sharpen our sword, Lord, regardless of where we are. Regardless of how old we are or how young we are in you, Father. And to those who are hearing the word for the first time, Father, I pray, Lord, that this word has pricked their hearts, Father, and that they will believe by faith that there is nothing that can keep your love from them, that they are loved, and that you, God, are their shepherd. You, God, you created them. You created us. You know even the, the hairs on the number of the hairs on my head, Father. Nothing can keep our love from you, no, no matter how high, how low. God, you are always there with us. And we thank you for the Bible says. Bring to our remembrance a good Bi the Bible says. Give that word. Keep let the words be hidden in our hearts that we don't sin against you, Lord. Let us stay sharp and let us always be prepared. Don't let the enemy catch us off guard, Lord. Lord, I pray that we all acknowledge those things. That are, that are aching at us, that are chirping at our hearts. And that we give those things to you, that we're casting our cares on you, Father. And that we're trusting you, that the battle is yours. And that you're strengthening us even for the battles that we that you tell us, you know what, I want you to go through it. I want you to pursue it. I'm going to give you strength. You're going to make it through. Because we do need those battles. We do need those things to help us to grow. Because even we need to see who we are. We need to see who God sees. We need to see ourselves through the eyes of God. And so, Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this word as it, as it enriches, as it grows us. Like I said, I hear the swords. I hear the sharpening. Keep the word in your heart. Don't lose the word. Don't lose your faith because it protects you. And so, Lord, we just thank you right now. And we count it all done. We count our sh our shields and our sword. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for that divine protection, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. Lord, I, I, I thank God for this word today. I, I thank him. Um, even for me, when going through... Y'all can only imagine. I mean, this word here, keeping your your shield and your sword hand in hand. I was like, wow. The first two weapons. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our faith in the word. And if you have enjoyed this message and if you would like to support the ministry, please feel free um, to, to give. I have posted um, my cash app. And my um, PayPal um, in the comments, um, and I pray for you know those who do give. Lord, I pray that the Lord will bless your seed and He will multiply it. Um, 
And I'm, I'm like, so I'm just thankful for today. Oh, thank you. My son is over here going. <laughs> My chief engineer over here. But we're just, I'm thankful for the word today. And I want to um, go ahead and close out in prayer. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again, Lord. I pray for those who are listening now and those who will listen um, later today that you will bless them, Father God. That, Lord, that you will bless their week, Lord. And that they will be motivated and encouraged to be in their word, to sharpen their sword, to keep their shield up, Lord. That they will not lose faith in who you are and what you created them to do. Lord, I thank you for those who are given into the ministry, that you will bless their seed, Father. That you will give back to them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, and I bless you, and it's in Jesus' name, and I plead the blood of Jesus over your people, and again, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen, amen, and again, like I said, I thank you for joining me, Minister Michelle Collins um, with Ellison Ministries. Um, I will be back Tuesday at 8, at 7 p.m., for a Bible study, you can join me then. You can and you, know, you can also listen to the replay. And if you would like to worship more in the Word, you can join me at the Love Church Charlotte. Again, my apostle Delisa Rogers Butler. Um, and she brings the word today. You can come on in and join us at 1 p.m. at 5201 Nations Ford Road. I invite you to be my guest this afternoon. And again, I thank you for joining me today. I pray the peace and blessings over you. Thank you.